I'm Elizabeth Graham, an entomologist with the Forest Service based in Juneau, Alaska. I'm here today in a forest north of Juneau to talk about hemlock sawfly, an important natural component of our forest. For many of you living here in Southeast, you may already be familiar with this native pest and not even know it. An outbreak of the native defoliator began last year in the central and southern parts of Southeast, especially Mitkoff, Kupernoff, Admiralty, and Prince of Wales Islands. This year, we are seeing damage extend as far north as Juneau. Hemlock sawfly larvae hatch in June and begin feeding on the older needles of hemlock trees. The larvae will feed throughout June and July with the damage becoming more and more apparent as the larvae become older and bigger and consume more needles. Hemlock sawfly larvae only feed on the older needles, leaving the new growth behind. They are referred to as wasteful feeders because they do not fully consume the needle, leaving behind the small midrib vein. Larvae go through four or five growth stages called instars. Between stages, larvae shed their exoskeleton in a process called molting. Hemlock sawflies pupate in late summer, producing small golden pupil cases, which can be found on the hemlock trees as well as lots of the understory plants beneath. The adults emerge from pupil cases in the fall to mate and lay eggs, which are laid on the underside of the needles. Sawflies are classified as wasps, but sawflies do not sting and are not bothersome to people. From a distance, forests affected by hemlock sawfly appear yellow-brown and the tree crowns appear much thinner than normal due to needle loss. Within these forests, there may be so many sawflies present that the frass, which is a nice way of saying sawfly poop, can be heard raining down on the understory plants, such as devil's club, blueberry, and skunk cabbage. You can even find piles of it collecting there. Outbreaks typically last two to three years. This native insect is always present in the forest, just at lower levels during non-outbreak years, providing an abundant food source to other animals, and they cause negligible damage when they're not in outbreak mode. In 2019, the Forest Service's Forest Health Protection Team conducted surveys throughout Southeast Alaska to assess hemlock sawfly populations and damage to the trees. We use a simple tool called a beading sheet along with a stick to tap on the branches and count how many sawfly larvae fall onto the sheet as well as other defoliators. Some people think we're doing really weird medieval role-playing games or perhaps flying a poorly designed kite. However, we're scientists here, hard at work. We also use the beading sheet method to assess the presence of natural population controls in the forest. There are fungi that infect and kill hemlock sawfly larvae. And so we use this method to determine the proportion of healthy to infected larvae. We've noticed that in forests where the outbreak has persisted longer, fungal disease is more prevalent. That indicates that the populations will start to decrease and the outbreak will be ending in these forests. Warm, dry weather reduces fungal infection and it is likely that the abnormally dry summers we've experienced the last couple years contributed to our outbreak. Parasitic wasps that invade sawfly pupil cases are another natural population control that help to end the outbreak. Top kill and tree mortality can occur when there is an outbreak of both the hemlock sawfly and another native defoliator, the western black-headed budworm. Western black-headed budworm feed in the new buds and the new foliage of hemlock trees, whereas hemlock sawfly feed on the older needles. When both of them are in outbreak mode at once, you can have complete defoliation of the tree, resulting in mortality. Survey work in 2019 found low populations of the western black-headed budworm throughout southeast Alaska, so we do not expect to see a lot of mortality this year. We monitor the extent of the hemlock sawfly outbreak during our aerial detection surveys. Every year, the forest health team conducts surveys across 15% of the forested area of the state, looking for insect disease and other damages to the forest. Aerial surveys for Southeast were just recently completed, and our preliminary results have shown over 200,000 acres of sawfly damage, indicating that we are in the middle of a significant outbreak. We also are now developing new tools as a way to monitor the hemlock sawfly outbreak using satellite imagery and remote sensing tools. This will enable us to map the entirety of the outbreak, not just the areas that we were limited to fly. Although most people think of insect outbreaks in a negative way, there are also several ecological benefits to this natural part of our forest. Hemlock sawfly larvae provide an abundant food source for birds and other animals. The frass that rains down on the forest floor is a nutrient pulse to the soil. 
The more open canopy increases light to the understory for the plants and trees that are competing with the western hemlock. This can then lead to an increase in browse for herbivores like deer. And the pupil cases, well, they're delicious.